Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear this Friday morning. The first thing I want to do is wish my sweet and beautiful wife, Gail, a happy birthday. We're going to have a great day with some with your sisters and your daughter and everything. So uh, enjoy the day. Love you. All right, the weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning, Drew Pollard up there in Southport. Great little small business here. Uh, this is Americana, Small Business America, right here in, in, in our area. We're looking at a high today of 84, low 73, and a water temperature is 81 and a half. It went up a half a degree this week. Our river readings at Appalachia to Blunstown. They're brought to us by Mountain Dew. Get on the outdoors of Mountain Dew and also get outdoors with Mountain Dew. We're looking at a 12.7, right at 13 foot at Apalachicola. It's high. It's going to be high tomorrow. And the Choctaw at Caraville are 10.3 in this. You see it's high too. And both of them are going to be just high water. We talked about it yesterday and talked about it again today. The river's going to be high. But the good thing about it, you can sort of get back up in those sloughs and see what's going on there. And you may, and we'll talk about it during the fishing report, may see, uh, find some little bit of a a mayfly hatching, it'd be interesting. It'd be late May, early June. Tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. We're looking at the tide, strong tide, high tide this morning at 9.45, and a low tide this evening at 9.11, almost exactly 12 hours apart. The wind's gonna be aiding a little bit as it's coming in. It's gonna be coming in out of east, southeast at about 10. So a good steady breeze today, just if you're outside, you know, in the middle of the day, make sure you wear sunblock and hats and shirts and all that. And if you're in the early morning or late in the afternoon, uh, wear, wear some bug, bug repellent or cover your skin because the mosquitoes are out there and a few of those yellow flies are still around. Uh, let's take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. You know, we're always talking about different things, just being aware of what's going on and, and just and the patterns and things too. Over, over here at Lake Powell or what we call Phillips Inlet, we'll get a lot of rain like we've had and, and, and it's going to, the water's just going to bust out of there. But the county, uh, over the years recently, there a lot of times they'll just sort of open it up so it can get on out of there, which is sort of a safety measure. And, and it's, uh, you know, it's always a sort of a uh, spontaneous thing we, we don't know when the rain's coming but anyway it becomes an unsafe area when it when it sweeps through there but it's, it's uh, over the years become a tourist attraction everybody just ooh and ah over it and which it is really interesting to see all that water just rushing out of there but it can become dangerous so I'm gonna show you uh, this is I just picked this up last night on Panama City fishing page a boat you're gonna look in the lower hand corner I'm gonna show you this little video a boat is out there I guess it's trying to come back in but it circle, it, it actually turns over. So we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to pick it up here real quick. And uh, if I can get it in here twice, let's see. Uh, okay, here it is right here. Okay, well, let's see, that's the end of it. That's one of the helicopter pilot. That's the end of it, Jeff, let me play it again. Uh, okay, let me start back over. <laughs> uh, that's why last night, what happened when I was looking at it, everybody and their brother must have been looking at it. And it, it, uh, it, it just blocked up on us. So I'm gonna try it again because this, uh, I hear, no, uh, no. Uh, what happened, the pilot, the pilot, uh, became, I guess he was trying to, when the boat turned over, he wanted to be go, go in a rescue mode. Uh, hold on a second, it's just, okay, I'm gonna watch it again. See, okay, here we go, here we go. All right, look. Uh, uh, see the boat in the right-hand corner down here? Okay, the helicopter is going to circle around it. Okay, there's the boat. It's sort of in the middle now. And that's, that's the Phillips Inlet to your right. That's the Gulf to your left. So he sees he's in trouble, so I think he's going to try to turn and go out. And he's about waited too late. Okay, so keep an eye on it. This is real live action here uh, when, it, when he's filming it. And boom, look, look at that boat turn over. And then the helicopter pilot uh, realizes what has happened. He goes into panic mode and tries, and tries to, you know, get some help and all. So uh, anyway, that it can happen so quick. And I, you've been in that situation before. You've been in a boat. You get in a situation. I said, this ain't good. And you try to turn around and come back. And then those waves hit you and it flips right over. So, I mean, that's, that's true action. We've talked about things happening here when you don't expect it. And, and that surely can be the case right there. 
Now, we've always talked about Paul Winterman has been, been on the show before with his wife. They'll take these long trips. He's a wildlife photographer. Well, he just posted this picture. I talked to him uh, a couple of days ago. He's on, they're on another trip. He's up in Ohio. And he's up there at a park. And, you know, what? he's not like a normal camper. Well, but, I mean, you know, we'll go to the area and camp a couple of days and then move on. But he'll stay there a week or two or three weeks, and they'll, they'll get a layout of the land and see what's going on. And he found he found a, a fox den. So he, he and his wife just sat there behind the den, patiently sat there and waited. And this is only a wildlife photographer with a lot of patience can do this because he knows nature and he, was, he knew what was going to happen. And he's got this, this is a picture of a fox. This is real, folks, this is Paul Winterman's. This is a fox bringing food back to the den. Now, is that not a classic? Photograph. You can see where, uh, I don't know if you see it on your screen, it's sort of drooling, it's holding that squirrel in his mouth. This is nature. This is raw nature at its finest. And the contrast and the, the beauty of this picture, is, to me, was just awesome. And good job, Paul. When I was talking to him the other day, I was going to see if he's in town to come on the show, but he was up in Iowa. And he was at this park right here. That's a nice little park to be camping at, isn't it? Up there, I forget what part of Ohio he is in, but that, that is true nature right there. So good job, Paul Winterman. When he gets back in town, he's going to come on the show and talk about it. Okay, how about this? Having a dog named Shark at the beach was a mistake. And when you start hollering for Shark, for your dog to come, everybody's going to look around in the water. My good friend, Miller Nixon, found these the other day. This is interesting. We'll talk about scholars later on. Miller found... I remember Miller Nixon. His dad was Urban Nixon, an early principal there at Mowat, and uh, Miller, his wife, talked, but found five scallops on Beach Drive yesterday with the grandkids. They're between a quarter to a five, five cent piece and 50 cent piece. Uh, is this a harbinger of the return of other areas? Is just a nominally? I'm thinking, uh, Miller, I'm, I'm thinking we, we're going to have, if we just, everybody can leave them on. I know what Miller did. He threw them back. He's a good outdoorsman, and uh, he's he just tickled to see them. But, that's just something. That's right there on Beach Drive here in St. Andrew Bay. Bo Rollins down there at Howard Creek. Look at the size of that. that and the bow fishes on a regular basis at Howard Creek, and when he takes a picture of one, it's big. Okay? Coming up, this is, this is interesting. This is the Liberty County Bulldog Booster Club. And I got all kind of kin folks throughout the woods up there. They're going to have a bass tournament. I know it's way off, a couple of weeks off, but go and put it on your calendar, July 17th. And they're gonna, uh, it's gonna be a good one, I can promise you. And it's gonna be, uh, we're gonna, if I'm up, if I'm around, I kind of weigh in, I like to, I like to go cover that. So, big bass tournament up there. They're gonna help out the booster club. Fishing is the most expensive way to get dinner for free. You know, I always try to justify it with a $300 snapper trip, but uh, I just wanted to, okay, that uh, that covers our pictures and all. We're gonna. We're going to come back to our next segment on, uh, on some uh, novelty fishing lures. So let's take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. The other day we had Steve Taylor on, Dr. Steve Taylor, talking about fishing. And he was talking about, you know, he had a picture of, of catching that bass that had a duck in his mouth. And, I, and we started talking about the lures and all. And I remember when I was collecting lures, I shared the story about uh, there was what they called novelty lures. And, and Gail and I started getting a kick at them. So we'd pick up one every now and then. They had a little collection, not a vast collection of them, but it's just some neat ones. So uh, pertaining to what we're talking about, they wanted to share some novelty lures. These just put together, not, not really to catch fish, but they were just sort of a, a catchy thing during that period of time in America. So it's part of Americana, and uh, I'm, they're all different themes and all. So and some are presidential, but we'll start with this first one here. This just a, they were, they were actually, uh, let me see, Joe Camel. Okay, that was back the Camel cigarette, Joe Camel or something, and uh, that, was, that was a cool one there. And then the presidential one, uh, it started out actually with the, when Jimmy Carter was president. I don't know if you can see this. See, when Jimmy Carter was president, he was uh, he called the Prez. There was a peanut. I got a couple of these. In fact, I went ahead and I uh, actually got a pen at one of the meetings that Jimmy Carter, uh, they, uh, as a, the Prez and Cotton Cordell made them, but it was a peanut lure and that was real popular and everybody enjoyed collecting those. And along the same line, uh, then later on, they said, well, if we're going to do it for Jimmy Carter. They did it for, for Big Bill, Big Bill Clinton. 
I'm going to turn this sideways. That's Bill. Let's see. Turn it this way. Yeah. Okay. Bill Clinton. Okay. And uh, whatever. It, it was just a funny, funny themes and all. And uh, different presidential. And so that was Bill Clinton right there. And then, and I don't, I, I don't know if we quit making them or we just, we just uh, ran out. Then the different other different themes. This is a spark plug one. How about that? Let me see. AC spark plug. And that was uh, if you want to put a spark on your on your fishing trip, you can fish with that. Okay, and then we had, uh, we also had one, a little Coca-Cola. I always thought that, a little Coca-Cola bottle. Okay, check that out, a little Coca-Cola bottle with a, a collectible there. And then, let's see, then we had, this is advertisement TV. This is not that old, not antique old, but it's a helicopter lure. The, remember the uh, rolling? Roland Martin helicopter lure, okay, and uh, as advertised on TV. That's still in the package. I just, I never fished with them. I just thought it was funny. They, they advertised them a lot. That's back when uh, uh, commercial TV was really getting into uh, those spots and all. But my favorite one of all time. Remember, you've been fishing and you heard the stories that that I, I threw everything at that bass, but a kitchen sink, and I still couldn't catch them. Well, when I saw this one, I just, I cracked up. Check this out right here. Folks, this is a kitchen sink lure, <laughs> and you can uh, you can see it's a kitchen sink. And I just thought, I, st I they, would, they didn't make many of these. I guess people just kept them. But anyway, that was just some of the the novelty lures that that was made in America, and it's really uh, an interesting part of Americana. And I wanted to share that with you because there are so many uh, so many things uh, that were so important in, in the fishing, and, and yet it just shows a sense of humor that that folks had in those days. Now, I always tell you I appreciate the feedback and, and all we get get from uh, all of you. I got an email the other day, and I thought it was good. I'm gonna I'm gonna read most of it to you. This Stan Bourne, he's been a daily viewer for 10 years. He's talking about uh, the offshore fishing trip that I take with Billy Archer, with a group of us take. He said I've been fishing offshore for approximately 60 years. I've used my own boats, a 25, 27 foot boat. On, but on small charters, large charters, and head boats. But your Seminole wind trip with Billy Arthur is a perfect, I told you, <laughs> that, that's a perfect trip, I, but I don't, I don't want to call it a perfect trip because it's scary because you just don't have that many perfect trips. But here's what he's saying. I've tried to get on a charter, but uh, I, I just try to get it set up. But what is, his point is, I think it would be, if we had someone to organize a trip, that you would have hundreds of viewers that could fill up an Archer trip. Please give us some thought and consideration. Let me know if I can assist. So Stan, and he gave his phone number. I, I text, I emailed him back. I said, this is a good idea. In, in the early days, uh, we were doing a show. Captain Roy and I did a, a trip or two on, on the little head boat there at Captain Anderson's. That was a head boat, a little half-day trip, a uh, panhandle outdoor trip. And it, it was good. It wasn't that much. But if some of y'all are interested, I know some of y'all are because you mentioned it to me. And we get at least 10 people now, as you saw on the show, it's a $300 trip, but you're going to catch $535 worth of fish. <laughs> but uh, if, if y'all are interested and, and can get a hold of us and maybe stand, or I don't have time to put it together, but I, I certainly coordinate it with Billy and get, it, get the dates and all and get it coordinated. And it's not, it's not complicated. It's just sort of get, make sure everybody's going to show up with the money. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I just think it's a great idea. So if you would, text me, call me, and give me a number or email me. And, and if we get, you know, 10 or 12 people and uh, we can go and listen, we can go with more than 10. Well, on a trip like that, you have 10 fishing spots, okay? Three on each side and four in the back. So 10 people pay, but we can also take riders and the rider and, and what, uh, what I've done, I've taken someone with me and, and uh, people and the person with me, they don't have to pay, but they don't get a share of the fish, but they can rotate in with me and that, Yet they can fish too, and then you know they can legally fish, and they can catch fish too, and everything. Of course, we all give them some some of the fish anyway. So, you, but uh, you, you know, only ten people pay any tip and all. So anyway, if you're interested, let me know if we get ten or twelve people together. I'd have twelve people really, uh, or ten with some riders. But let me know, and I'll call Billy and find out what kind of dates he might be booked up the rest of this year. But I know they they reserve some dates because of bad weather. So I can get hold of Billy. If we can't do it now, we might do it in the fall. Oh, definitely next year in the early part of snapper season. I'm sure he'll book us up. So let me know if you're interested, okay? All right. Talking about doing things for the viewers. We're going to get ready. Jeff, I can't reach out. Uh, can you give me that pickle jar? Yeah. <laughs> that pickle jar, well, about the TV. Uh, 
I, I always, I always think about a Boy Scout motto: "Be prepared." I try to be prepared when I come on the show. Think about it, uh, but it was over there. So anyway, so we're gonna draw. And also, I was thinking last night we haven't done because of the pandemic and all. We haven't done a sweepstakes in a good while. So we're gonna, uh, we, Gail and I, uh, we're gonna put together some baskets, some giveaway. We're gonna do a summer sweepstakes. It might be a couple of weeks. It might be uh, whatever. But we're gonna just, you know, put away some stuff and say, we've got stuff saved up. That we, out of Mr. Tackle boxes and shirts and caps. So we're gonna put together four or five boxes and, and draw some uh, some sweepstake winners. To make sure you're in the pool. Okay. Wow. Right, here we go. Getting some fresh seafood. But before we do that. Los Anahitos. Wendy came into town uh, yesterday for Gail's birthday, and, and first thing we did when she got here, went down to Los Anahitos. In fact, I have, I'll show you that picture if I can find it. You probably don't want to see it. I'll show it to you later. $25, Los Anahitos. David Baxter from Bonifee. And the second one, second $25. Betty Brown, Panama City Beach. Uh, let's go down to Tropical Dock Seafood with some good fresh seafood. After the storm, those fish get stirred up, I'm telling you. And, and those, those captains, they catch some good fresh fish. So if you don't win, go down and get some. Tell Clay, the Coach Chester said, come down there. He'll give you a discount. Just kidding. Uh, Greg Taylor, Panama City Beach. I ain't heard from you lately, Greg. Well, you must have been working too hard. And the that's $20 there, Greg. I know you're gonna spend 50. And then the big red snapper from Panama City Beach, Tracy Haycock. Listen, there's three winners from Panama City Beach. Betty Brown, Greg Taylor, and, and Tracy. And the other winner from Bonifay. Okay, we're going to uh, get our stuff together. We've got a good fishing uh, forecast, which I think I left at home, but uh, I've got it all up here. So we'll, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look at our, before we get in, I don't have the fishing any time, before we get into it, I'm gonna go ahead and show you that picture. I told Jeff it's Gail's birthday, so this was yesterday when they just rolled into town, the first place we ran down to Los Anahitos, and just the three of us, about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we just had a wonderful, wonderful time. I just love my daughter, Wendy, and I love my wife, Gail, love all my family. It's just quality time we spent. So we're gonna to wanna to show that. So let's get back to, uh, let's talk, talk about catching some fish this weekend, which you can do. But before we get into it, I want to, let's go to where we just saw that video of uh, Phillips Inlet or Lake Powell. Uh, okay, here we go, right here on, on the west end of the beach. I'm going to show you where this happens, and we've showed it before, but it, it and right here in this, in this picture is cut through, but what happens, nature itself, or the waves coming in, they'll clog it up, and when it clogs up, then all, all of the docks and everything, all the water, it gets, the water rises. It really gets up in here. Then the cannon comes out, and they'll cut it, and they let it start flowing out. It really is a, a natural phenomenon to, uh, uh, to open up itself, but the county tries to let people know ahead of time that so man, it's a man-made situation there. So make sure, uh, uh, make sure you see, uh, you understand that and all. But for, uh, let's talk about fishing. The first thing I want to talk about catching, and I, don't, I did leave my fishing report at home. The first thing is actually catching the king mackerel this week. There have been some great catches of king mackerel. King mackerel bite has been on fire. And I, uh, it, it's this time of year, we're talking about how June is so important in, in the king mackerel fishing. So once it starts, like in late June like this, it's gonna continue through July and August and into the fall. King mackerel has been a staple as far as our captains, as far as our local anglers just wanna go out on a weekend and catch some nice king mackerel. It's fun catching king mackerel. And uh, we, we wanna do that soon, but I, I've just seen some great pictures of it, okay? Uh, let's go down. Uh, keep in mind, you know, how nature does now. This time of the year, uh, the, the two things, you have the seaweed and the sargasm. The, the sargasm, that grass is, you know, it's sort of a, it, it's different from the, the weeds that just wash the shore and all. That brings in a sargasm, brings in floating pods of it. I've got a picture of it. I'll show you two maybe next week where those float, they have little baby fish in them and all that, and it really is some great feeding along those lines and also that has just started coming in, okay? So when that comes in, late June, you start giving the seaweed washing in, and I, I, now with the social media, you get all kinds of reports about it. Anybody got any grass reports over in Pensacola Beach? What about down at St. George Island? There are different groups can respond. So I can really, as, well, I know what they're talking about, so I can look around and see people I witnessed down there, like St. George Island, 
just got a little bit of grass in early part of the week. For, I'm talking about surf fishing now. And, uh, and also uh, somebody spotted some over, actually Navarre Beach is clear, but somebody saw some in Pensacola. So it, anyway, July, when you get in July, the grass is, you know, is going to be pretty thick. Late June and July, the grass is going to sort of be a problem fishing the surf. Bass, let's go to freshwater. Bass fishing has been good. I wrote down, I remember right down last night, I got, all, I got a photographic memory of what I wrote down last night. I wrote about brim fishing. Think about the second hatching of the mayflies. It's sometime in June, and with the wind being like it has been, it may be happening soon. Like we, you know, we talked about it the other day, uh, and I, I talked about it with some Weewall folks. Uh, it, it's going to be happening any time. So if you get out there, remember, uh, just be looking around those trees for, for hatching and all. The mayfly hatches, you know, is going to be going on. But this is a great opportunity this weekend now don't let this high water discourage you it's a great opportunity like i said to get up and get your boat kick in that trolling motor get up in those slews just cruising there and you see that you see those willow trees or something and you see the activity going on stop observe and see if they're hatching here or hatching over there and these little flurries and all and if you get a chance uh, run down and we all get some little bb bugs uh, we're going to get we're going to go down and talk to those folks down there they, they, They've been, they've been around a while, and they, they get some good natural stuff making those and all. Okay, the best bet this weekend, I'm trying to tell you the best bet, again, offshore, the rest snapper is still red hot. It should be calming down a little bit, so offshore, rest snapper and kings. Inshore, you saw the trout uh, that Chris caught, the first place trout, by letting his fishing lure just sit there for like 30 to 45 seconds, and that's how I got the winning trout. Out of everybody fishing, I don't have any boats, they had 40-something boats, I think, fishing it and the boat the winning boat caught it by having a fishing top water plug sitting there so that speaks volumes on you know so many times and hurry hurry cover 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 but anyway that, that's what happened so top water bite has been good and the grass is not bad yet so top water uh redfish and and trout in the bay the bass and brim uh, uh, in, in the sloughs and all so uh we've got to wrap it up and it's been a great week. I really enjoyed doing the show this week for you. So we appreciate the guests we've had. Appreciate your feedback. You have a great weekend. Enjoy the outdoors and do something good for your fellow man or someone close to you. And you have a great weekend and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.